Greetings, I am Mike Grontman. This video clip describes properties of prograde and retrograde orbits. More video clips illustrating other effects of interest to space mission design and to spacecraft design can be found at the website astronauticsnow.com. The simulations are performed using AGI's STK. This video clip describes properties of prograde and retrograde orbits. The orbits in our example are circular with altitude 400 kilometers. The red vector facing you is the vernal equinox vector. The sun is on the left illuminating the earth. The yellow band on the surface is the equator. A satellite intersects the equator as it moves from south to north at a point called the ascending node. At the beginning of the simulation, the ascending nodes of our satellites cross the equatorial plane at the location of the vernal equinox vector. That is, right ascension of their orbits was equal to zero. Right ascension of ascending node is counted from the vernal equinox vector. The other point of the orbit, where the spacecraft crosses the equator, moving from north to south, is on the other side of the Earth, and that point is called the descending node. The line connecting ascending and descending nodes, the line of nodes, is in the orbital plane and it crosses the center of the Earth. If the Earth were perfectly symmetric, then the orientation of the orbital plane would have remained fixed in inertial space. Because of the Earth's ablateness, the orbital plane changes its orientation while preserving inclination. It is said that the orbital plane precesses, and rotation of the line of nodes is called regression of nodes. The rate of precession depends on orbit semi-major axis, eccentricity and inclination. If one looks at the rotating Earth from the north, the planet rotates in the counterclockwise direction. In our example, the red satellite orbits the Earth also in the same counterclockwise direction. Such orbits are called prograde. Note that the line of nodes precesses in the direction opposite of the Earth's rotation. If one looks from the north, the white satellite orbits the Earth in the clockwise direction. Such orbits are called retrograde. Note that the line of nodes now precesses in the direction of the Earth's rotation. The red and white satellites are in identical orbits with the same 400 km altitude and the same 28 degree angle between the orbital plane and the equatorial plane. The only difference is that the red orbit is prograde and the white orbit is retrograde. Orbit inclinations are 28 degrees and 152 degrees respectively. As a result, the lines of nodes precess in opposite directions. Regression of nodes is the enabling effect for important sun-synchronous orbits favored by many remote sensing and reconnaissance satellites. A satellite in sun-synchronous orbit requires the line of nodes to precess in the direction of the Earth's rotation. To achieve such precession, the orbit must be retrograde with orbit inclination larger than 90 degrees. As observed from the north, the sun-synchronous satellite would orbit the Earth in the clockwise direction opposite to the direction of the Earth rotation. The green orbit in our example shows a satellite in a circular sun-synchronous orbit with the same 400 km altitude. Orbit inclination is 97 degrees. The sun-synchronous orbit requires that the line of nodes completes one full rotation of 360 degrees in one year. This requirement determines orbit inclination for a given orbit altitude, or the orbit altitude for a given orbit inclination. One can see that the orbital planes of the red and white satellites 
precess much faster than the Sun's synchronous orbit of the green satellite. More video clips illustrating other effects of interest to space mission design and to spacecraft design can be found at the website astronauticsnow.com. Thank you for watching. I am Mike Grontman.